Hey, Keith Little from Balance Body Mind here at SHP. Today we're going to talk about how the influence of rotation and also rotation of the, the foot, but in particular between the tibia and the ankle, uh, can cause problems, particularly with the lower back. First of all, we're going to assess Henrik with a standing rotation test. Henrik, if you just like to rotate back. What we're looking for is to see how far he can rotate. Look at the dissociation between his trunk and his hips. And he's probably got less than 50 degrees here, which would want me to assess other areas of his body. Uh, if not, let's try the other side. And here we can see again, a bit, bit of trouble dissociating here. Um, and also it's a bit of tightness in the hips, so we want to investigate this further and maybe view if this is an upper or a lower body rotational issue. Right, take a seat. Testing this in a seated position gives us an idea, because we've pretty much taken the lower limbs out of it, if this is an upper body issue. You like to rotate that. And to the other side. And here we can see he has a little bit of restriction in rotation, and we'll probably want to investigate this further, but for the purpose of today, we're going to ignore this and just go and look at what's going on in the lower body, and particularly what's going on um, at his foot and the interaction with the tibia and fibula. Stand up. What can happen is that as we start to lose core stability, particularly maybe the transversus is working or the interaction between the diaphragm, the transverse, and the pelvic floor is dysfunctional, we can often see people's feet turn out a little bit. Would you like to turn your foot out? Some people also suggest that um, with this turning out, it's also used to stabilize the, the lateral sling if this isn't working properly. So it's, it's a it's a recruitment just to try and stabilise that area. But one thing that you can see with this toe out or duck position that some people might get is if we try and rotate Henrik backwards, if you'd like to try and rotate. Okay, what we can see here is actually a little bit jammed up and because he can't extend his hip because of the rotation of his foot, it's putting a lot of wear and tear into that area. Also getting other muscles to recruit that are probably working too hard. And if you'd like to come back, put your foot back into that position. If we get Henrik to now rotate with his foot back in his normal position, we can see that he's got the ability to rotate through this because his hip can now extend much better. Um, I'd like to turn back. So before you start thinking about if you have back pain or problems with the hips and you're not rotating properly or you've got pain from anything else, have a look at the position of your foot or get the therapist that you're working with to understand the, the implications of a rotated foot maybe a lack of tibial rotation and its implications on the lower back because the pain is not always where the problem is.